uh, Tammy Blake. She's a uh, uh, she's a transport nurse. Actually, you're one of the nurse coordinators or chief flight nurse at the primary children's hospital in Salt Lake City. Um, we've I've been talking to her. I first saw her talk at the uh, Airborne Conference in Austin about a, two months ago, and she gave pretty much the same lecture. I asked her to come and speak to us and give the same lecture that I saw. Uh, fortunately, Airborne Life Support sponsored her and brought her in for us. Uh, how to use the Bronchotron. Her team, if the patient's intubated, 90% of those patients are transported on the Bronchotron on high frequency. They only use conventional ventilation for their hearts, for, the, for the, their heart babies, pretty much. Oh my God, patients. They've been doing it about, uh, how long? About four 2002. years. 2002. So about four years, over 1,500 patients they've used this on for high frequency. Everyone you talk to in, in the field who knows, who's working with these says you need to go to primary children's. They're the folks who know how to do this. She works with a doctor named Don Null. He's kind of the, the godfather of high frequency ventilation. Um, he's kind of, he's your medical director as well, right? So, um, we're real fortunate to have her here. Um, the weekend crew really got a lot out of what they saw last night. And so, uh, I think she saves the best for last. She's going to go over some case scenarios and things like that. But, <clears throat> things are we think. Okay. Um, as he said, we've been using it for um, about four years. We started with the Duotron and we went back to percussion air and said, you know, you need to make these changes. And that's when they came up with the Bronchotron. So a little bit better version than what we started with. Um, and to give you a little background, we're a nurse nurse team. Um, therapists didn't want to be involved with us back in the 70s when the team started. And so when we use uh, high frequency and transport, all of us have been transporting before high frequency ever hit the units. So none of us had high frequency experience. Um, and so Doc came in and said, I can teach you how to use this. And we said, really? And um, it, it's worked out very, very well. If you were to ask our, our nurses, um, I don't, you couldn't take the machine away from them. We really think it makes a difference. And once you understand the nuances of, of the machine and how to ventilate on high frequency, how many of you are therapists? And the rest of your nurses. Okay. Um, all right. Well, Don actually give, gave this talk, or gave part of this talk at the um, at the airborne conference. So what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about management. What kind of settings you might want to have a patient on. That's what we do in Salt Lake. How you do it here is going to be dependent on what your settings want or how they manage high frequency. But this is kind of the idea of what we do up in Salt Lake City. So the first part's a little bit dry. So what is high frequency? We get kind of basic here. Um, high frequency is uh, any ventilator that delivers fast rates and uh, small tidal volumes. And there are your, there's different types. You've got the oscillator, which is your sensormatics, and I believe you guys do um, And that has active, um, active exhalation, and then you've got your flow interrupters, which would be your vanilla jet, and then you've got the hybrids, which is what the bronchotron is and what the infant star is, where you've got the oscillatory waveform. And this is um, basically the difference between uh, conventional ventilation and high frequency formula and, and how it removes CO2. And the only take home from this is that um, are you familiar with this formula, therapist? Okay. Okay. It's um, it talks about the you know CO two removal or metabolic uh, ventilation, and in high frequency ventilation, your tidal volume is squared. So basically, um, small changes in tidal volume make a huge difference. Message of that. Uh, the key is to know the physiology of the machine you're using and the and the uh, disease that you're treating. With high frequency ventilation and with conventional, the biggest, uh, one of the biggest things you can do to increase um, oxygenation is to increase your FiO2. And the, um, the next thing you're going to want to do is you want to achieve normal mean lung volume. Because tidal volumes are so small with high frequency ventilation, you need to have adequate lung volumes. 
That's, so that's where mean comes in. There's a fine line between achieving adequate lung volumes and over distending, where you can compromise uh, blood flow and you can cause barrel trauma. Okay? Um, delta, delta P affects more of your ventilation in high frequency. If you're using delta P or your amplitude, whatever you want to call it, I'm not sure what you guys call it here. When you, when, you, when you change your amplitude, if you're moving your amplitude um, to increase your oxygenation, most likely your mean is not set high enough. So amplitude deals with CO2 removal. And, and frequency really doesn't have uh, a lot to do with oxygenation. The faster you go, the more likely you are to air trap. And if you air trap, you can actually have an adverse reaction on your oxygenation. So some things to keep in mind. With with a high frequency, once your frequency is set, frequency we use, let me back up, frequency is the, the term we use with the bronchotron. Um, I'm not sure for the for the nurses, I had to learn that 60 of a frequency equals what hertz on, on the sensor magnets. They follow me there. So if you're on a if you're on a hertz of 10, you're on a frequency of 600 on this machine. 